Okay, today what I want to do is show you just a little bit about how to sand uh, different projects. And basically what I want to do is just show you the different sandpapers. And I kind of like in the shop to start out with a 100 grit sandpaper. And I know that it's maybe a little bit more expensive to use sandpaper that has uh, the holes in it or it's already cut out for like a five inch diameter sander. But what I find out is that it's actually really uh, a better way to use it because if you fold the adhesive side on top of itself, it actually makes for a more rigid piece of sandpaper and it lasts quite a little bit longer and I'll show you that in a minute. I like to start with 100 and then I switch over to 180 and fold that over and then I will end up with 220 and I'll fold that over. So there are different grits of sandpaper and uh, if you will use the grits of sandpaper correctly which is with the uh, most aggressive sandpaper first then moving to the medium sandpaper and then the fine sandpaper you'll find that it'll take material off so much faster. Uh, the first technique that you need to uh, kind of get on top of is we're gonna we're gonna just do these edges these profiles we just finished with and so in order to do those what I like to do is and you, and you have to find you, you want the the sandpaper to find its way on top of the profile and so I like to use this part of my hand and because it conforms around that profile and so I'll just take this piece right here and by using by using the sandpaper against your hand like this it actually bites into your hand and it becomes a part of your hand which is really useful um, and saves a lot of trouble uh, of you just trying to hang on to the sandpaper and so as you look at that right across here already I already have a nice round profile the thing that you don't want to do is, is to put your thumb here and sand or you'll actually sand uh, you'll actually sand sort of a divot into it and so that's not what you want to do so then uh, what you can do is just continue to sand each of those profiles and if you zoom in right here you'll see that as I sand it doesn't take very long for you to get that exactly in the position that you want it to and so if you think about sandpaper what it is is it's like thousands of little mini arrowheads and when you when you go to sand on it if you press the arrowhead real hard down into the wood what you're going to do is you're going to what's it's called pinning the sandpaper so you'll jam sawdust into the grains and it'll fill up the surface and it'll destroy the ability of it to cut because you can't get uh, those little arrowheads and knives up against the edge of the wood so a lot of times people destroy new sandpaper by pressing too hard on it and so basically if you look at this and you just watch closely as I do this I'm, I'm applying very little pressure with new sharp sandpaper so just watch how quickly the dust from this starts to show up and I don't really have to work very hard longer strokes on this are far better than short high pressure strokes and that's all that that piece needs right now and so already you can really see it there as I cross grain sand you can see it come out and that is all that I need to do with that piece and so I'm not destroying it it's still very sharp so now I already have all of these edges four edges done to 100 grit and I can kind of feel that when you go to feel whether or not you have a surface that is sanded properly you need to use your whole hand to go over that surface to feel it if you just use a fingertip your finger isn't nearly as good at detecting that as if you lay the whole your whole hand across it and feel uh, that so then what I'll do is I will switch to the medium sandpaper and I'll just go over it again and that's already done
Now that one is done. Okay. End grain does require a little bit more effort. You have to be really careful though on end grain because if you have different wood densities, for example, if the uh, maple is harder than the walnut is, the maple will stay higher than the walnut. You'll actually uh, sand down with the walnut. And that's not what you want to do. You want it to be just a perfect smooth surface. So now I'm already done with two sandpapers. And I usually call this polishing. And you can see how quickly the dust comes up. And wow, that already turns just to glass. And remember, this isn't because this piece of sandpaper is new that it's working. It's because it's not filled. And so already we're beginning to see the shine come out in the wood because we're on the polishing end, the very last type of sandpaper. So what we're going to do is work our way in and I'm going to finish this board on these four profiles and then I'll come back. Okay, so I finished sanding all of the perimeter and everything that has been machine sanded or uh, hand sanded and so I'm ready to move to some machine sanding. If you um, have been watching You've probably seen uh, the sanding pad. It's the same type of pad that we use um, when we're doing some sort of routing on the table with a big router. These work really nice. All that is, it's not anything fancy, it's just carpet padding. And so if you get some of the higher density carpet pads, cut them up into the right shapes, they really work nice for keeping your projects from getting a marred surface, which is a dent into the grain. I have here three different sanders, and each one of them has exactly the same grit of sandpaper uh, that was on uh, that we used uh, by hand and so what I'm going to do is use each one of them and these are the Bosch sanders and um, I think Bosch sanders probably are the best orbital sander on the market right now mostly because each one of them is its own little vacuum cleaner and uh, dust is really a problem and this is what you don't want to be breathing in and so it's really just kind of like a maybe some sort of a Tupperware type of container and uh, you can just really snap that apart and pop it uh, on the end and I don't want to clean that out right now but these these other ones are clean but so anyway when I go to sand I'm going to use a little bit of technique here and I don't the thing that people get into is they it's not really random random of course, random would be just to randomly do it, and it assumes that you would get over the entire surface. And a lot of people really aren't very random, meaning getting over the entire surface. So I like to use a little bit of geometric patterning. And so we'll come across this way, and we'll go this way, and we'll kind of cover half of half of the disc. Put that on there. Half of the disc with each with each pass. And so then we'll go in the opposite direction this way. And we'll bring this surface down with the highest uh, grit sandpaper uh, or the most coarse grit sandpaper first. So well, let me demonstrate that for you.
Now, it may surprise you, but that is completed with the very first grit of sandpaper, and it is, it is very flat. Um, it still needs to be polished a bit, but that is all that it takes to do it. What I also, um, a lot of students or people press too hard and don't let the orbital sander do the work. And I'll let you uh, just listen to, to the sander work. Now it basically has no weight on it here. This is, I usually hold it in two directions. That's right now, this noise is what you should hear. That's not what you should hear. That's pushing too hard. So this is where we want to be with this sound and not with this sound right here. So at this point then I'll switch to the medium sandpaper and after I get done with all three sanding coats we'll move on to the next phase. Okay so just a couple of things. I've got this board worked up and it's it's in really good shape and one of the things that you can do um, and you just kind of have to listen to your hand about this but um, like I was saying you have to use your whole hand to tell but if you'll close your eyes you shouldn't be able to tell where any of those wood joints are and so if it's perfectly flat and smooth and you can't tell anywhere where those wood where the wood came together or where the surface texture changes in it then you know that you've done a good job of sanding one thing that um, people often get frustrated about is hey this is taking too long uh, to, to sand this properly and so they'll apply too much pressure to the sander. All that that does is it just destroys the sandpaper. It, it breaks off the arrowheads that we talked about, the little uh, sharp edges on the, on the uh, surface and then it pins it which means that it fills it with wood fiber so then it just won't cut at all. And so um, the proper amount of force on the sander is, is gonna is gonna make this a much more enjoyable experience. The other thing that that I often see people try to do is they'll, they'll tip the sander up and they'll apply pressure on just one edge or on the lip of the pad. That destroys the pad, it destroys the paper, and it digs a hole in your wood. And when you go to finish up, you can, feel, you can actually feel the dip in that uh, area. Remember that as you bring a surface down, you want to bring the whole surface down. You just don't, you don't want to bring one surface down and then move over here. And so mostly people get frustrated because they want to finish one area and move someplace else. But the way to sand properly is to take the entire surface down as a plane all at one time and start with the coarse, go to the medium, and then to the fine. And that's where you're going to be done very quickly. I probably have um, less than 20 minutes in getting this project ready for dipping. So if you'll follow me over to the dip tank, I'll show you what we're going to do next. So here we have a dip tank set up and um, what I do is, uh, is I just put vegetable oil into the uh, utility tank and so um, basically this is what we're going to do is we're going to seal this and the only thing that's in here is vegetable oil. It doesn't make any difference what type of it's the same stuff you use for popcorn. It's cooking oil um, and so you can see that when the cooking oil dries it actually creates a coating and so what we're going to want to do then is to take the liquid vegetable oil and just submerge the board in it and then pull it out but vegetable oil is all that is ever needed on a cutting board um, if you do anything else it, it's not good for food and so um, the vegetable oil is is the proper way to treat a cutting board so i'm going to take this cutting board and put it against the back and i'm just going to submerge it down in the oil and that's the first time that we get to see really uh, all of our work kind of come together and so we get to finally see what it's going to look like so I pull it up and just let it drain and wow does that ever look nice and so I just let it drain uh, for a few hours and then basically I'll just stand it up and let the uh, the vegetable oil go ahead and cure and within 24 hours it will be plenty hard uh, and it'll be usable. Oftentimes also as you use a cutting board, uh, the cutting board will get dry and so you should pretty often whenever you use a cutting board once it's dry, 
Just stand it up and take any old vegetable oil, corn oil or whatever, and just put it right on top of that board. And it will bring that luster out that you can see again just as soon as you go ahead and coat it. So I hope you like that. I hope it helps you with, uh, uh, with your project.